Hi everyone, I'm Erin Thompson, and this is Everyday Expressions. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to participate in Altenew's Sweet Moments Video Hop. Today, I'm sharing a twofer. I had so much fun creating these whimsical stamped florals with the colorful soul set that I created two cards for you. So let's get started. Did you know that Altenew includes a layering guide and inspiration in every stamp set? I always like to take a look at this before I begin and make sure that I understand how everything layers and works together and also what colors they recommend. Sometimes I go with my own and sometimes I go with their recommendations. In this first card, I am using one of my favorite sets of blue inks from Altenew. It's the Lapis Lazuli Collection. What I wanted to share with you in this first card is actually my process for stamping multiple layers in many of Altenew's florals. I often begin with a template and I take a sheet of cardstock that fits into my Misty or any stamping platform and I actually die cut as many of the flowers as I can. For instance, this stamp set has two basic floral sizes, a larger one and a smaller one. So it, you'll see in the first row are the smaller flowers and in the second row is the larger flower. So there are basically four stamped layers to each flower. I only die cut three on this template because the last image is actually fairly simple to just stamp with a stamping block. So I die cut three and then I can move them around based on the layers. So in, for instance, for step one, for some reason, I started in the middle instead of at, at the end. So you see I'm stamping the first or the lightest color there in the middle. Then I can pick that flower up, move it to the spot where I have the second layer, which you see I just stamped. And then I can move them down the row to actually stamp and produce several flowers at one time. It just makes it easy. Now what you, you will see is that I will move them. I don't just leave them in and stamp a different color all at once because what I find is I will accidentally get one color on another stamp if I try to do too many things at one time. So I just keep it easy. I stamp the first layer, then I move that flower down, I stamp the second layer, and then you'll see me pick it up and I move it to the third layer. And actually, I have a sticky mat behind my template so it holds them in place. And it works pretty well, but sometimes it sticks so much that you'll see, I'm kind of using different tools here. Sometimes I, I can pick it up with my tweezers and sometimes I found that I needed to use a craft knife. So that's why you see me trying different things here. So right here you see me stamping the second layer. I've already stamped the first and that's the second. And now I pick up the third that's in there and I move the second down to the third and then I stamp the final layer. Sometimes when I'm stamping florals that have multiple layers, I like to mix up the rotation of colors. I don't want them all to be the same colors throughout. So you'll see I'll start with a lighter shade for the first layer and then go through the shades in the collection. But then other times I'll start in the middle and then go darker. And here you see I actually even decided that I wanted some white petals. So I skip the first part, the first layer, and I go right to the second layer. And that way when your flowers, when you're creating a card or a cluster of flowers, they look like real flowers because they have different dimension and different shades of the ink. One final tip I have for you in stamping multiple layer flowers is sometimes I even want more shades than just the four. So you will see on this one, I stamped this dark shade 
several times, three or four times, I re-ink the stamp and I stamp it over and over to get a much darker shade. Because as you know, some inks also, they will fade back just a little bit. So if you want it really saturated and intense, stamp it several times. And that's what's nice when you're using the Misty. Not only can you line up those stamps exactly where you want them and then by using the template you can stamp multiple flowers over and over and over again and you know it's going to be perfect but also you can change the intensity of the ink shades by doing that so that's just my final tip on that for you now you'll see I am actually creating, I love to create my own backgrounds using sentiment stamps. So I chose one of the sentiments and I just stamped it multiple times on a piece of white cardstock. And by the way, do you see that new satin masking tape from Altenew? I love this new tape. I cannot get enough of it. Um, it's I've been searching and searching for a while and finally have found another tape that does not, it sticks just enough, but yet it doesn't tear my paper and um, it holds everything down perfectly. So you see, I stamped the sentiment over and over again. Then I even used one of the layers from the florals because I thought it almost looked like a little ink spot, a little splat. So I actually even in a shade of gray stamped that over the sentiment and then I ink blended around the edges and then I just cut a panel out for my um, card base just to add interest in the background. And then you can see I finally decided actually that this stamp set something I really like about it is. I didn't need to create that template at all. It actually, if everything isn't aligned perfectly when you're stamping, it's okay. It's kind of artistic and whimsical. So if everything's a bit off from what the layering guide says it should be, no one's going to know. So by the time I got to the leaves, I just thought that I would be brave and freehand the stamping and Everything did not line up perfectly, but no one will ever know. And I was happy with the results. So I just wanted you to know, you really didn't even have to use a Misty on this one. You could just freehand it all. And I think it would absolutely come out beautiful. So I adhered uh, the stamped background panel. And then you see, I just kind of um, decided where I wanted my florals. I glued the, the first layer down and then I used dimensional foam tape for other ones and now I'm doing the same with the leaves, kind of piecing it in together. I love the bright blues paired with these bright greens and I'm sorry I don't remember the green collection but um, I love how they all really pop against the black background. Then I chose my sentiment. I love the blockiness of the sentiments so you'll see in a moment when I die cut this that it actually even cuts the little spaces between the words. And I just think that's so special when it's the little details I think that means so much. You know, it really makes a difference on our cards. So there you can see the spaces. So I add some foam tape. And another tip I have for you is when you're stamping a sentiment or placing a die cut sentiment, sometimes it really adds a lot of interest to layer it and connect the things. Like you'll see, I layer it over my flowers. I don't move it to the side so there's space. Artistically, it just is more balanced to the eye and it pulls things together to give you a focal point. Okay, I have to tell you, I am in love with this new woven basket 3D embossing folder. I used the Altenew Navy cardstock, ran it through the dye machine, and then you can see I took the gold pigment ink, and I believe that's antique gold, and then kind of held it at like a 45 degree angle and very lightly brushed it across the raised part of the embossed image. And I... I just love the way this turned out. I think navy and gold, you just cannot go wrong with it. So you can see, I go back and forth and back and forth. I always start with a lighter hand because you can always go darker. You just can't ever take it away. 
and you can see I kind of um, got a little heavy handed in a couple places so I just took my lint free rag and wiped a little bit of it off and then went back with the ink and made it even a little darker in other areas and it helps all blend together. It almost looks antiqued and I just love, I just love how that turned out. And this is a pigment ink and because I use so much of it, I actually use my heat tool to quickly dry that panel. Then I put it at an angle into my trimmer so that I could put this on an A2 sized card. And being able to turn it at an angle just makes it easy. And then you've got two pieces that you could actually even make an another card from the extra piece. And also, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of obsessed with the foil washi tape right now. So I just put this on a piece of white cardstock, trimmed the ends, and you'll see I'm piecing it onto my card panel and placing it a little bit behind the navy panel. And you'll see I actually put the tape a little bit below the top line so that I can squeeze that gold washi tape strip back behind that after I secure that with dry adhesive. I add a little bit of wet glue here to the back. And then I very gently kind of shimmy that between the navy panel and the white background, the white cardstock panel. And once I get that into place, I burnish it with my bone folder, use my scissors, trim off the over, the excess off the edge of the card. And there I'm just stamping the middle of the pink flowers and you saw at the beginning of the video how I um, how I stamped those in my Misty. And now I'm using the Sapphire Pigment Ink, the uh, Mixed Media Ink, and stamped my sentiment to match the navy cardstock. I dry that also. Then I die cut it. Use a little bit of that satin um, tape there to secure it. Now I have all my pieces and I'm just going to kind of figure out the placement of all of them and how many I want to use. And that takes just a moment of kind of playing with it. You know how that goes. And once again, I'll use glue to adhere the ones in the background and then I'll pop the middle one up with a little bit of foam tape, add the leaves, and then you can see, I think the most important part is always figuring out where you'd like your sentiment to be placed. And I finally decide right underneath the flowers there, um, I think will look best. So once I kind of have an idea, then I start to glue and adhere everything down. So finally I have the flowers down and then I add the leaves. And finally, a little bit of foam tape to the sentiment and place it right under there. And I just love how this comes out. And for the finishing touch, just a few embellishments. So what do you think? Thank you so much for joining me in my craft room today. Don't forget to hop along with the other designers and leave comments for your chance to win an Altenew gift certificate. 